And she accepts him as a messenger, but she accepted by force. Where do you get this narrative from? I'm questioning your narrative. Where do you have it? written in your scripture. Where? I don't know, but you know the story. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't. Because all these things I hear, people are making things up. Nothing to do with history. Where is this narrative? Where can I read it? In your hadith, the Battle of Kedar. It doesn't say anything like that at all. It doesn't. It doesn't. Where? You make the claim, you produce the evidence and show me so I can read it. I, I will find it. Yeah, please. The, the internet is not working here, but I will find it. It's a known story. It's not something I invented. No, 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 it's from your books. No, this, you claim that you make it to substantiate. What we find again and again is Islamophobes. Not even a good critic of Islam. Islamophobes, they make these claims. Just to I'm people. Not, I'm not Islamophobe. No, I'm against what they what make happened. these claims, and you've read them. Did you seriously open up a book? Okay, can I ask you a question? Prophet, yeah. on this, my, my religion did bad things. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That. On the issues of marriage of the Prophet with this particular lady. Sorry. Did you really open up a book of hadith and stumbled across this? Or did you read an article somewhere or watch the video somewhere written by Islamophobes or produced by Islamophobes? Tell me. Honestly. Be honest to yourself. Only judging by this fact. Sorry, sorry. In your heart, you know this Be is wrong. Be honest to yourself. Did you happen to read the hadith like I read Nasai? Flicking, flicking the pages, and suddenly I came across this. The, the hadith oh, wait, is wait. made to explain all sorry. these things. So sorry, sorry. I'm asking you a specific question. Okay. Did you happen to read a book of hadith? You know, you're just no. browsing it, and you found this, or is it that you read this in an article somewhere written by an Islamophobe, a critic, or a video made by them, or something like this? I've seen it on, on YouTube. Exactly. Exactly. But it doesn't mean it's not true. No, exactly. So now I am saying precisely, people are making these kind of claims and misleading Look, people like yourself. I, I, I believe you tried to... You've been misled by them. To find excuses for his No, no, no. Behavior. You have been misled by them. Did you read these yourself and check? Okay, let me check what does it say in the Arabic. Let me read a commentary. Let me speak to Muslim scholars and that's what they say. But what what you, can they say? They, they, no, they wouldn't did say you do something that? against them. Sorry, did you do that? They would find Excuse me. Did you do that? No. Right. So you've taken the criticism levied by the accusers, the Islamophobes, certain bigots, individuals, right? No, no. And then you take it for, oh, there you go. This must be true. Take it for granted. Is this a good approach? He may have done good things. Sorry, sorry. Is this a good approach? It's up to you what you believe. No, no. When you take an approach, imagine now, I start reading about a book about the Bible. It says, oh, the Bible is believed by people from Mars only. It's a book. Look. From Genesis to Revelation, they are not called Christians, they are called Wolumba Wolumba people. They believe in the Bible and no one else does believe in it. Now, when I read this, think what I'm saying. When I read this, am I going to say yes? Yeah, that's what it is. So a person comes along and says, I'm a Christian, I read it. So no, no, you can't be a Christian, you have to be Wolumba Wolumba. What are you going to say? Look, I'm going to be honest. Even in, in Christianism, there are Christ prophets that did mistakes, and I acknowledge that. I prophets that make mistakes? What kind? Yes. What kind? Ch chosen people. Uh, like, David did mistakes. Like what? What do you mean? I want to know King the examples. David. King David did mistakes. What mistakes did he make? When he, he married, uh, he took a married woman and he killed her husband in battle. He, he made that he, he was going to be killed. Uh, Marrying, uh, sleeping with your own daughters. Do you think a prophet would do that? No. Why is that in the Bible? Uh, did believe, that really happen? I believe prophet did that. Really? But they, Seriously? They, they did mistakes. Seriously? But someone is made a prophet by God to be an example to people and he sleeps with his daughters. Seriously? They, they made mistakes and God punished them. For they, they didn't claim it's in okay. the name of God and God okay. tell them to do this. If, do you believe in child marriage? If you are a doctor and I go to you and then you tell me, you know what, when I operate, um, I just cut the artery here and there, you know, but it's okay. And I, I might kill them afterwards. And I haven't got a degree anyway. These are all fake certificates. Um, I'm not even a polybed surgeon. You tell me that. Now, I go to you for a heart operation, life-saving operation. 
when you disclose all of that, when I know about you, am I going to trust you with my heart being operated by yourself? No, no, but no. So when you see a prophet in a religion says he slept with his daughters, do you think people will take him seriously? Which prophet was this? Can you tell me? What was this prophet? There was a prophet. I think it's Which prophet. No? No, but not, it wasn't a prophet. If the Bible says it's a prophet, he must be a prophet, right? You know, you know the story, right? So he's not a prophet because of that. No, but you know the story of Lot and the yarn in your heart. This is actually what happened. He slept with his daughter. Honestly. No, I'm asking. This? In the Bible, there's a particular prophet who slept with his daughters. Yeah, it, it, it's Lot. I deal with this. Now, do you really this think this isn't the story? They they made him drunk, so they they did because he they fought his daughters. Eventually, okay, not willingly, not willingly. It doesn't matter. Did he do he that? He was drunk. He didn't know what. So he gets drunk. And A prophet of God gets drunk. Do you think when someone is drunk, he's able to communicate about God no, properly? But, but God punished them because of Sorry, this. sorry. Imagine, imagine, imagine you getting drunk while you're doing operation. Would I trust you for my operation? No. Right. So how would you trust a prophet of God drunk and saying, God tells you do this and do that? Okay. Lot, it wasn't a prophet. He didn't prophesy nothing. He just... Did God communicate it no, with him? It's not Lot, actually. No, Lot. Daughters of Lot slept with him in a cave because they thought the war was ending because of the Sodoma the war and Gomorrah. It's not the, the issue is how can you believe in a book which gives you picture of prophets and messengers who are supposed to be role right. model, role model, who are supposed to be your so best Muhammad example. Muhammad is the role model. Of course he is. Do you have any problems with him? Of course. What problem do you have? Problems. Give me some example. What about the Aisha? What about Aisha? Child, child bride. Child? She was six. You call her a child when he got married? She was six, right? Uh, no, no. Yes, yes. What age was Mary the mother of Christ when Joseph, who was 90 years old, married her? Maybe 12, maybe 13. Is that a child? No, 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 no. Did God... Excuse me, is that a child? Uh, I don't know the age. Yeah, maybe he, she was very young. Hmm? Oh, Rachel, Leanne, Rebecca, this many of them. Was she a child? Less than 14 years old. Okay, so, so her husband is he a prophet of... The, I'm asking you a question. Example. The mother of God got married to a 90 year old and you're saying it's okay? I'm not saying it's okay, but so you are not, it's not an example for humanity. So, so it's not okay. So you condemn it altogether. Yeah. So you're saying God should not have been born through her. God meaning Jesus God. Yeah? But you're saying husband. No, no, he's think not about Jesus' it. father. Think about she it. was virgin, right? You believe in this. But, Jesus was, but you're okay with the mother of God marrying someone who's 90 years old. I don't know when she consummated the marriage, but Aisha was nine, so. She was an adult. Do you have a problem with adult marriage? Would you let me marry your daughter when she's married? Then I'm 50, ask, I'm not 50. Let me ask you this question again. Do you have a problem when adults get married? Adults now. Exactly, she was an adult. What's your problem? At nine. Okay. She played with dolls. What age do children become adults? Whenever they decide it's time to get married, if her husband was nine, then maybe it was, it was Excuse me. all right. Excuse me. He was 50. You're again really not discussing this on a purely level of thinking. If someone becomes an adult at the age of 12, are you going to say, no, that's not right? I would agree prophets made mistakes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Even our prophets made Talk mistakes. Talk about adulthood. What age? Someone becomes an adult. At least a few years after puberty. So at nine, definitely you're not what in is, a mental state you can marry. You know puberty is. Puberty is a beginning of adulthood. Do you accept that? Yes. Right. What does it mean, adulthood? It means someone is being ready to conceive, ready to have relationship. I don't think you would give your daughter to marry. So my daughter or daughter? So in you, your heart, you know this you, is wrong. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You are really an individual who has issue emotionally, not rationally. 
I am saying an age of adulthood is when they have passed the age of puberty and they are about to now conceive. In this country, a nine-year-old got married to a ten-year-old and they had a child. Are you going to condemn that? That their babies and their children? Babies don't have children, my friend. Okay, first of all, do babies have children? Look, babies are incapable of producing children. <laughs> Even some kings of England had a child marriage. But Everywhere, the marriage okay. was not like 18 years old. I agree. You have somehow been what we called suffering from presentism. Today, people are told you can, you should get married just before 30, and then in 40 you can't have any more children. So you have a close window, or something like that, or 18, 19, 20. Look. The present society tells you marry when you have an education, when you have a degree, when you have a job, when you have a house. No, that's not the age of marriage. Age of marriage is when you have reached adulthood and when there will be no harm. I understand you, you do mental the gymnastics to, to explain this. You call that mental gymnastics? I can clearly see you are very uncomfortable because you know that that's what it is. Biology has determined when an adult becomes an adult. And yes, in your heart, in your heart, you know it's coming the truth. Why are you laughing? No, I said the same thing. In your heart, you know it's coming the truth. Why don't you accept it? In your heart, I'm making a similar kind of statement. In your heart, you know it's coming the truth. Are you going to say no, it's not? This is just a statement, my friend. The reason why God put a rainbow in the sky, do you know, in your Bible? So that he, he can be reminded of a covenant that he made, a contract that he made. Does God need reminding by a rainbow? He doesn't. So what you read in the Bible, you should ask yourself, could it be actually from God in the first place? What Old Testament is the Bible? Okay, so the Bible, did you ask that question? The Bible doesn't come from God then. You have to conclude. You make that conclusion yourself. I believe, I believe it does. It's not from God. I believe it comes from God. So when he puts a rainbow so he can be reminded, can you ask yourself, why does God who is all knowledgeable needs to be reminded by a rainbow? Where did it come from? In Genesis. You know, have you read this one? I've read the Genesis. Before the flood happened, then God made a covenant with Noah, the prophet. You, you believe in the same Old Testament? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in that. The Quran is based on the Old Testament. The Quran is not based on the Old Testament. Come here. Come here. The Quran is not based on the Old Testament. Who told you that? Where do you get this from? Isn't Muhammad? Didn't he tell uh, if you have doubt, go to the people of the book and no. the Torah? Yes. No. No. So again, you miss the present thing what the Quran said. The Quran spoke about the Prophet. In Kunta. Why in Kunta? Why in Kunta? Check him in my Nazar. It goes like this. If you are in doubt, the old Prophet, after what we have revealed, then ask the people who are reading the scripture before you. But no. But the truth has come to you, so don't be those who have doubt. So it was addressing to the prophet. What was his response? La ashak wala asal. I do not ask and I do not die. I doubt. I don't doubt and I don't ask. Because Allah told him in the same verse, and now the truth has come to you from your Lord. So don't be of those who doubt. It was a rhetorical question. If you don't know, go and ask him. But he says, look, I have already accepted and believed in you. And I'm confirmed that the revelation you've come to me is the truth. So I have no, have no doubts. I don't need to ask. So don't just bring in, you know, again, where did you read this? You didn't just happen to read the Quran, flicking the pages and you came across. You read that somewhere or what's in a video written by some of us. Produced by some of us. Again, you've been misled once again. You need to ask yourself, how am I going to learn? about the Quran, by watching these videos and books or articles, or am I going to open up the Quran myself and see what does he have to say? Thank you. Are you seeing that? I don't believe it comes from God. When you read it, you will engage with it, and you will find out when it's from God. Do you believe in the heaven, of the Muslim heaven with 70 virgins and stuff like that? Only 70? How many then? 
1,000. Look, in heaven, they believe you will have virgins. Sure, sure. Do you believe in heaven? Yes. Right. What will you do in heaven? First of all, in heaven, no, no, brother, give him the chance. What will you do, do you think you will actions have... wise? First of all, there won't be any sexual. No, no, don't say happen. what you will not do. My question is specific. What will you do? Not what will you not do. Do you believe in heaven? Do you want people to go into heaven? So I want to know, okay, fine. What is heaven awaited? From our Bible, there are not many details about heaven. So we, we can only expect you expect people go to heaven? Because that's the ultimate destination, right? Good. What will we do in heaven? Have sex with virgins? No, I'm asking you. No, just live in peace and harmony. There, there won't be any sex or men and women. Or You're saying there won't be this, there won't be that. Don't tell me what you won't do. What will you do in heaven? What will I do in your heaven? What will he do in your heaven? Live in peace. What do you mean live in peace? When I say live, doing what? Would he be having peace in eating something? Would there be any food to eat? It would be a different state. We can't compare it. So tell me about it then. Tell me about it. You yeah, haven't got a clue. So how can you aspire to go to heaven when you haven't got any idea about it? You tell me about your heaven. In our heaven, there will be pleasure, joy, peace, tranquility, contentment. And the good pleasure of God so where have, we will see God. You will have virgins. Wait to see you. Try to understand what I'm saying. I'm very curious we, about the virgins. We, listen, you are so jealous of the Islamic heaven. Because you know how in your Sounds music. incredible to no, me. No, 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 no. I can clearly see how jealous you are. In fact, most Christians are. The reason they talk about all this is because of jealousy. Because they know they can't get anything like that. In this life, they want to have so many beautiful women in their life. And they know in heaven there will be none for them. But Islam offers that. Islam offers companionship. Islam offers contentment. Can you have seven joy. virgins, please? Can you ask this? So down. Basically, in Islam, there will be spiritual contentment and happiness as well as physical. I don't believe physical. I mean, we don't believe it. It's up to you what you believe or you don't, but this is the reality. In your concept of belief, in your concept of heaven, you don't even know what you're going to do. But I'm telling you, God has already told us, God made us spirit and flesh. And He will reward us with spiritual and bodily happiness and joy and tranquility. If I, was, if I was an atheist, this wouldn't sound right. You know, for, if any, if you're an atheist, say, okay, if you would you want to go to a heaven not knowing what to do? He doesn't even know what you're going to do. It doesn't matter this. Okay, fine. Do you, do you find companionship and love? But please explain this One verse moment, about the 70 virgins. There is no verse about the 70 virgins. So let me ask you this. Do you feel in this life companionship? That you want to have companions? No, because I want to know if you have feelings in this life, and suddenly all of it is taken away. All the good things that make you happy, it's going to be taken away in heaven. I believe, in your belief. I believe we won't have any needs, like hunger, need for sex, need for different things. So, so would you be happy? Because the spirit doesn't need sex. Would you be happy then? Why was, what, why was Jesus in the Bible having fish and honey when he was spiritual body? No, 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 no. After his resurrection, he was still eating flesh of fish and honeycomb. So, but so basically, body after the resurrection. So when you are resurrected in heaven, would you have a body? No. no, no. But Jesus had a body. But he was still on earth, not in heaven. So where did Jesus say you would not have a physical body in heaven? Did he say that to you? Uh, I don't know if it specifies. Or, uh, then you are basically it's making not, up. Not very important for me. So, important. You don't know what awaits there for you. Is it torture in heaven? Or is it pleasure in heaven? Is it contentment in heaven? Is it tranquility in heaven? Jesus said we would be we would be like like children when, when we enter heaven. So we would have to be like children. Yeah. But what would you do in heaven? Children have orgies and uh, seventy virgins. In your heaven, nothing. I don't believe 
they will do anything that in the Quran. You see, you're again talking about negatives. What would they do in your head? I don't know. You don't know. So, is there anything? Imagine somebody wants to sell a car, and the person, the customer asks, How's the car? Is it good? He says, I don't know. Is the car comfortable? I don't know. Is the car fast enough? I don't know. Is the car robust enough? I don't know. But would you think a customer would take that car? We only know from what, it, what it was revealed. No, no. What, has, what has been revealed? What has been revealed? Yes. What has been revealed? We don't so, have too many so, details. So you go to a car dealer and the car dealer says, when you ask, is the car any good? He says, I don't know. Is the car robust and good? Comfortable. Speedy. Is the car the is the car really good in the sense that okay, it's a good structure, the metallic body and so on, or is it gonna just break apart? Every question he says, I don't know, I don't know. Okay? He said, okay. Is this who car am I to answer you what's stolen? He says, I don't know. Is this car really in a working condition? He says, I don't know. Would you buy that car? This, this analogy has Sorry, done. would you buy that car? No, good. So about heaven. You don't know, you don't know anything. So why would anyone want to go to your heaven when you haven't got a clue what heaven is like? And yet you become jealous of Islamic heaven because there's going to be bodily enjoyment. Okay, first of all, I'm not a scholar. I don't represent the Christianity or... I'm just... You'll be surprised when you read. You, you won't find much information there anyway, not much. That is why we say, look, I agree in with Islam, this. in Islam, Allah has given us certain descriptions of similarity. There will be food, but you, you won't be food like this. It will be like, like you must, oh, we used to have something like that. So because what awaits there, no eyes have seen, no one has tasted, but there's something God has given a comparison so that you can appreciate what's there. No, my they will not, you will not feel any fatigue, you will not feel any tiredness, you will not feel any headache, nothing. It's all about being happy and being joyful and being tranquil and being content and being peaceful and exactly. being, okay, being, being what? Fully. Someone who say like, yes, I am feeling some of that. With this I can agree with. I don't agree that with is this. Heaven. You will have 70 virgins and a uh, white servant, a boy, white, white as light or something like this. There's this virgin. So if I find so someone... Who are the virgins then? Where God created from? them. He says in the Quran, he creates them for special creation. So they don't have a soul then? No soul. If God creates... If, look, when people now, I mean, think about it, subhanAllah. People are making plastic bodies of human beings so like and they like wait, 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 and they're making them for their enjoyment. God creates companions for your happiness yeah. and you're saying, oh, does them have a soul or not? Yeah. They, they can interact yeah. with you. I, I believe this was it's a reward. And you are, I believe this was invented by Muhammad to attract people. Okay, come, come to me. I will give you virgins. I will give you this. It sounded very interesting. You know, can I, I can understand. Can I inter Where are you from, brother? Romania. Romania. I'm from Iraq. I ask you some question. Okay. Where is out of the topic? Big, out of the topic. Big, but we're gonna go back to the topic. Okay. Where is the origin of English language or Romanian language come from, or French or Italian come from? I don't know. Okay. I'm not an English. Okay, okay. I tell you in, in, in briefly, okay? From Babylon. Oh, you're from, you're from Babylon, right? From, okay. From the Roman Empire, Anglo-Saxon migrated to this land, uh, 100, uh, 1200 AD, okay? And they were speaking the language of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire before them was the Greek Empire, the, or Greek civilization, which was the mother of the human civilizations, okay? And the Greek took their language from the Akkadian from Middle East. From Iraq today, from Iraq today, okay? Look, in the Bible, in the Bible is saying, God is saying in the Bible, Iraq is the cradle of humans, cradle, cradle of civilization. And I know, uh, you know the history of uh, Sayyidina Adam and Hawa where they landed and Jabal Arafat and all the human civilization started there. When the human civilization started, there were two, a pair of humans, Adam and Eve. They expanded slowly, slowly, slowly. Some people say it's Adam and Steve. Uh, Adam and Eve, sorry. Some people say it's Adam and Steve. Okay, they can't say what they want. <laughs> right, okay, right. All these nations you see around the world, they are brothers and sisters. According to Judaism, according to 
Christianity Bible according to the Quran, you know, all these people come from a pair of human beings and they divide it. We are creating the troubles, brother. We are the human, it's not God. It's not God. We have money, we have food, we have water, we have chicken, we have fish, we have lamb, we have everything. Why are we fighting? No, he's not. He's son of God. No, he's uh, no. He said, no. I keep continuing fighting wars, thousands, millions dying for two wars. Even sometimes there is no word. You know the nature of the human yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. They fight because fight why you look at me? Ah, bam, 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 bam. And lots of people involved in this situation. Even okay. Football supporters fight each other. Fighting each other. Even one family, brother and brother, yeah. kill each other. Yeah. Son and uh, father, father, slave, father kill their children, rape their children. That's the nature of human. That's why I follow Jesus' teaching, love your enemy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If we look, apply these laws, look, it will I'm be not, heaven on I'm earth. I'm not too, too much religion, uh, too much religious, okay? But I understand the way of life, which is Judaism, Christianity, Quran, is the one message from Mongol. The message being sending, sent the Jewish different type of people, Christian different type of people. Muslim, the last revelation is is the Islam came after Prophet uh, Isa alayhi salam. Okay, that is one message. When I look, if you go inside the Bible the and message, squeeze message it, was... take out the good thing of it, you will see the Quran. Can you let him finish? Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I asked, no, I asked his permission. So the, the message was. You know, to not be friends with Christian and Jews. So how, how is this about unity? No, who said that? In the Quran. No. So again, you've been misled by no. something that you've read or you've seen, that isn't no it? Exists, Allah tells us that we need to cooperate in goodness, right? Not in the opposite of that. So there is righteousness and pity, albir and taqwa, and the opposite of this. He doesn't somehow stop us from cooperating and say, oh, you should See you, later. you should take them as your enemies. No such thing as that at all in Islamic teaching. What Allah says, don't take the Jews and the Christians as your awliya, which are protecting um, allies. For example, they are allies to each other. For example, would you consider Israel taking its protecting ally, Pakistan, and other Muslim countries. It will never do that. It will take its protecting ally, America, United States of America. Do you know why? Because they serve the same interests. They will help each other and so on and so forth. Right. So when it comes to having this protection, this protection, an ally, you are not going to go to someone who doesn't even have the same interest. Jews and the Christians, they don't have the same interest. But you can you can have them as friends, but not as a protecting ally. Okay, so that is what Islam says. Not that oh we can't have friends with them. People misunderstand totally. Take it out of context, especially by those Islamophobes. Why did he kill the Jews in Medina or uh, when? Prophet killed the Jews. You have been really, my friend, been really, really been influenced so much by this um, Islamophobic writings. The Prophet did not kill the Bani Quraiza, seven or eight hundreds of them. They got themselves killed by their own admissions, not killed. They got themselves their own punishment because of their crime. What was their crime? The Jewish tribe that committed treason against that particular law that was established then they broke that treaty endangered the lives of various people and when they were besieged and captured they then said fine give us an arbitrator and whatever he decides we will take the punishment the arbitrator they chose they were given the opportunity and they chose yeah sad and he was always their protecting friend. He was a Muslim, they chose him as an arbitrator. What did he do? He, instead of giving the judgment from the Quran, he gave the judgment from their own books, the Tanakh. The Tanakh says if someone, a city is captured, besieged, 
the inhabitants, you put the male adults to the sword. Yeah? To the sword. That is the law in Deuteronomy. That is the law given from God to them. So that law, same law, is applied to them, for them, on them, by their why, own why, choice. Why, why did they kill so, Christian, so wait, wait, wait. Christian so when, so when they no... got this punishment, it was a punishment they happily had to accept because it's from their own book. So the Prophet sometimes doesn't go and kill Jewish tribes here and there. Is a totally distorted, incorrect propaganda that has been passed on so much and you have been reading it and you get misled but, by it. But he, took, he spread Islam by force, do you agree with this? Islam by force. How can, okay, imagine now I have a gun and I say, become a Muslim. Do you think I can really make you a Muslim? Because when I, when you say, yeah, I'm become a Muslim, when you go home, say, you know, get lost what Islam is. I can't change in your heart by force. And yet in my country, wait, 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 Ottomans killed so many me. people. Excuse me, hang on, hang on, slowly, slowly, slowly. So can we change people's belief by force? Is it possible? No, but, but some people... Slowly, slowly. You say, they, no, but don't continue with the but. They didn't want to denounce their faith sorry, and they sorry, were killed sorry. for this. You but know that you cannot change someone's belief by force. Okay? So the Ottomans, when did the Ottomans force people to become a Muslim? I don't know, in 1400, 1500. Right. So this time the Ottomans were not following Islam, were they? Where does Islam say it can force people by uh, convince, not even convince, coerce and force people to become a Muslim? Where? But, but says Which the Quran teaching? Fight them until they uh, accept or they, they pay jizya or something like this. Until they, so if they don't accept, what do you do? So whether you, they accept it or, or they pay jizya, jizya and jizya what? only for protected, not to give him like this. You, you, you said it. Okay, so, the so verse that why, you are quoting it really tells you. Even now, you fight. Get killed you, you just said that. Sorry, sorry. You need to go one example by example. So the example that you quoted, yes. You fight them. If they accept it, that's fine. If they don't, what do you do? According to the Quranic ayah, you let them go. Apparently but they have Muslim to. Don't apply this law because they hang kill on, Christian hang on, nowadays. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You are now going from 1400s to 21st century to 7th century. You can't do that. Let's do example by example. You won't find the truth if you do this. Yeah, example by example. So now, today, the truth, today, the when truth the is not necessarily religion. Religion, no, my, friend, my, my friend, my my friend, when the Serbian, when the Serbian Christians massacred and killed eight thousand or more Bosnian Muslim men, is it because the Christianity tells well, them so? It was war between the state, not, not, not a religious war. So, they didn't so religion. No, if I say it's because of Christianity and Christian religion, would I be right? No. Exactly. It has nothing but to do with Christian, Christian did bad things. Oh, I Christian agree text. With this. Now, Catholic did where does the Quran or the hadith of our Prophet, the Sunnah of our Prophet, Sunnah of Islam, two primary sources of Islam, say go and kill these people? Where? And the only resource. That's the only true resource. Yeah, where does it say that? 